All right, Illini Basketball Podcast, episode number 93. Nailed it. Top of the head. Didn't even look. Uh, <laughs> number right, 100%. Uh, Illinois coming off of another loss, back-to-back losses. So I think the, the fact that they started 6-0 in the Big Ten, no matter who they played, uh, is good, considering what they've been doing the last couple games. Um, we knew it was going to be an issue without Kofi for the game yeah. in Maryland. I mean, the fact that most of the team didn't even show up is is really the big issue, I think. I, Maryland's beatable with or without Kofi. I don't care what anybody says. And Illinois, once again, had a problem with Dante Scott. And they can't guard him. And this is when next year, when Dane Danger's here and Ty Rogers is here and you got more length, it's going to be a much easier thing to handle. Yeah, uh, Dante Scott was – I mean, he basically could do whatever he want. Um, 25 points, I believe, a career high for him. And uh, they threw everybody at him. They threw Monte at him. They threw Grandison at him. They threw Hawkins at him. And it, it honestly didn't matter. So, well, they made him look like Michael Jordan. So, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, it basically he just backed everybody in, and shot over him. So, um, <clears throat> start off a line I player of the game. Um, I'm gonna go with Plummer just because he was the only guy that seemed to be able to do anything first half. Yeah, I think that's the like the only the only viable pick in this game. Plummer kept the minute in the first half. He was making shots, uh, making his threes, which is something that he's done in mostly every game this season. And um, it wasn't any different in the game in this game in the first half. And there's got to be a lot of questions asked about the guard play in this game because I think just about every guard, with the exception of Plummer, was pretty bad. Yeah, um, I I mean, Plummer. Yeah, I feel like he he shot well. Um, I think I think he had to force some shots just because nobody else could do anything. Um, and I blame a lot of that on. I mean, I hate to say it, but even if it's Bosman's Verdonk or Payne down low, if you don't go down low at all, then then it's easy to guard guys be on the perimeter. Um, and in the second half. I don't know if there was a touch down low from Payne or Bosman's Verdonk. Um, I think Bosman's Verdonk had a bad game. I mean, he was three of four from the field. The only miss he had was a little baby hook that it was in and out. It's not like it was just brutal or anything. Um, and if you, if you don't have that, then the teams can just, you know, just play you hard at the point. And and you're not gonna, you know, they know that you're not gonna go down low. I thought it was weird. Maryland went to a two-three zone one time when all Illinois was doing was shooting threes. Um, but uh, the biggest problem was uh, rebounding. The big guys rebounding. Uh, Bosman's Verdonk had one rebound, and uh, Payne had one rebound. I think so. Two rebounds between your two big men. Uh, is not going to win you many games. One of the most pathetic things I've ever seen, honestly. Yeah, yeah it's not very good. Uh, Brad said after the game, uh, quote, we might have to make a tweak depending on how long Kofi is out. Uh, yeah, Brad, you're probably going to have to do something. So um, other starters, Grandison, uh, I mean, Grandison, you know, double digits, that's what he does, 14 points, uh, five for eight from the field. Had a couple nice mid-range shots, um, two of five from three. Uh, his rebounding has really fallen off. I remember, you know, we, we were all about Grandison and getting on the offensive rebounds and stuff. Uh, he had three rebounds this game, a steal and a block. Uh, DeMonte, I'm going to I'm gonna say worst game he's ever played at Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> um, on both ends. I mean, usually DeMonte, the reason why he gets to play is because of his defense, but – his defense was not good. Um, he was getting back cut on. And then, of course, Scott was just too big for him to handle. Um, but 0 of 4 from 3, he went 0 of 5 from the field, one point. However, we talk about rebounds. He had eight rebounds. He led the team in rebounds. So um, at least, you know, he's doing something. And he also had six assists, which led the team. This is a type of game where you think, why the hell do they have so many one dimensional players playing? And right. there's a lot of those guys on this team. And yeah. Hawkins is absolutely one of them. Hawkins, one thing is rebounding. And uh, did he do that much in this game? I mean, he was more concerned with shooting threes, I think. Yeah. Uh, four rebounds, that's one rebound per minute. 
yeah. 16 minutes or, uh, one rebound <laughs> one, per four minutes four minutes yeah not good yep. um and i and that's I, I think that's the only time hawkins did anything impressive was when he did get that rebound he tried to tip it back didn't make it got a rebound again maybe and uh then it ended up uh making it but uh, the dude shoots 27 and a half percent from three this year why are you shooting so many threes and it's not like last year he was a great three-point shooter. Last year he was 23%. So I don't know. Brad Underwood needs to put the red light, big old red light in front of him and say, please don't do that anymore. Um, I'd rather see him take it to the hole and dribble it off his foot than take a three. Um, so I I don't know. This team has to find an answer because I don't know when Kofi's coming back. I mean, I hope that it's not – he doesn't have the same concussion problems as Curbelo did because uh, this team's going mean, to, they have uh, five of probably their hardest games coming up this year. Uh, they're already mm-hmm. 0 2 over the last two, so they could go 0 7. <laughs> um, it's not out of, you know, the realm of possibility. So um, Trent, I mean, Trent played okay, 13 points, um, three of seven from three, two rebounds, five assists. He had three steals. Um, Brad said today, I believe, that Trent didn't practice for the three days leading up to Maryland because he had a horrendous fall um, in practice before the Purdue game, which I thought was weird. He played the Purdue game, um, but he must have been exhausted after that because he played, what, 48 minutes in the Purdue game? Um, so, I, I mean, when you when when you only have Grandison with fourteen, Frazier with thirteen, and Alfonso Plummer with eighteen, and then your next scorer has five points, um, you're not going to win a lot of games. So, uh, like I said, I, I didn't think Payne was awful. His rebounding, of course, was terrible. Um, he did get yanked, I believe, on a free throw where they let Maryland get the offensive rebound. But I don't even think it was his fault. I think Hawkins, the guy that Hawkins was supposed to be boxing out. Uh, ended up getting the rebound. So, <laughs> um, but it, I pain pl- pain shooting the ball did all right when he had when he got the ball he had that nice I don't even know what it was runner line drive that went in. Um, so I, I I just if, even if Kofi's out I don't think you can get away from a high low game of some sort. Um, and that's what they did. And then it was just it was chucking threes and hoping he made them to keep you in the game. And then defensively, they were just – they were bad. Um, you know, I, I, I do think that Brad made a great adjustment um, at halftime. He ended up putting um, Trent on Fats Russell, and then uh, DeMonte was guarding Ayala, and then Plummer was on Hart because Plummer, I love him to death, and I love that he can shoot, but, man, he can't play defense. He gets burnt, and, and Trent even gets burnt by Fats Russell. But the fact that you put Plummer on him to start the game was was an iffy call. So I don't know. I don't know what. Well, I, I don't know where they go without Kofi though. Um, I don't this, completely disagree with the idea of having Plummer on Fats Russell to start, just because everybody knows that Fats Russell has a lot of talent, but he just does not ever finish. Shoot well, yeah, he, he doesn't shoot. ever finish. And then in this game, he decided that he was going to do some things, and yeah. uh, Ayala killed them early and yeah. uh, he was looking to shoot every single time he touched it. And then, I mean, I, it's just the whole not having Kofi thing is going to be a problem, but I think it could be less of a problem. If you have somebody like Curbelo playing the way that he's supposed to play right. in this game, he played in the way that he played early in the season, more concerned with shooting than actually trying to make plays, just yeah. dribbling around in circles and just taking a shot and missing it. It just, it's yeah. not going to work. I mean, I, I guess Curbelo was going through some flu symptoms or something. Um, they said he had a fever before the game or during the game or something. I feel like um, there's always a little excuse for every yeah, time he doesn't uh, play well. Yeah, so for, he played 14 minutes, um, one of six from the field. Yeah. Uh, How many turnovers do you have? Three turnovers. Um, him and Trent both had th- three, I believe. And then Hawkins had two. Podzimski had one. Podzimski. Uh, took that three at the end of the game that was five feet off to the left. That was weird. Um, <laughs> uh, him and Goody, Pazemski and Goody, they played a total of eight minutes combined. Uh, Goody did take a couple threes. 
Um, thing about Goody is he plays hard. I, he had three offensive rebounds in his five minutes he played. Um, I, d- I do like seeing him play. I I don't know if um, you know having him come in for Demonte and maybe taking up some of those minutes would be a bad thing. Um, he's clearly a better shooter than Demonte. I mean, I know Demonte was good last year, but he's afraid I, to I, shoot it. Yeah, I can't think that that wasn't somewhat of a fluke. I don't know, um, but good, I don't think Goody gives up that much on the defensive end. Last so. year, last year, Demonte was like the option that nobody really paid attention to. Right. So he was right. like everyone was worried about Io or Frazier or Kofi or even Grandison late yeah. in the season. And DeMonte yeah. would just slip in and get open looks. Right. This year it's a little different because now they don't have the same. Yeah. I, mean, I feel people, like he still gets open looks, though. He does. He doesn't shoot them for some reason. I don't think he has much confidence. Right. Which which happens. Um, but he still has the confidence to like drive in the lane and throw it off the backboard. So <laughs> that's, that's a bit true. weird. That's true. Um, Melinda's uh, played garbage minutes with Lieb in the last 42 seconds or whatever. Lieb, Lieb should start against Michigan <laughs> State tomorrow if uh, if Kofi can't go. Send a message to Bosman's for Donk and Payne. I don't know what that message is. Uh, message is Lieb is no about good. to drop 30 and 20. <laughs> um, usually Illinois has their uh, really bad end of the second half. Uh, this time they just decided to do it at the end of the game. I believe Maryland closed on like a 24-7 run um, to end the game. Uh, Maryland basically owns Brad Underwood right now. I think that's fair to say. Uh, they've won eight of the last ten, even when they're terrible like this year. Um, well, last and- year, it's like not even – is it ownership if you've choked like every single time, or is it just winning? Because it's not like they've dominated every game. I don't know. Illinois choked twice winning. in one season. It's winning then, eight out of ten. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's ownership. But. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that would be it. under uh, Aaron Rodgers' definition of ownership. That would count. So. Just like the Niners own him. But um, True. I, I think – I think you look at the IO freshman year, they choked twice in that season. The year after, they choked another one. And then this year, they barely beat them. Last year, it was just – they didn't even show up against them last year yeah. at home. Uh, this year, they would have lost if Kofi wasn't playing. And then Kofi wasn't playing, and they lost. So. Yeah. Um, yep. Brad said after the game, uh, quote, it's probably as poor defensively from an energy standpoint as we've played in some time. They took the fight to us. That doesn't happen very often. How many times has he said that doesn't happen very often this year? Every game they lose, he says Four something five. doesn't happen yeah, very five. often. Five, so five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I, I mean, come on. Um, he, he also said, uh, they had no fight and over my damn dead body that won't, that'll happen again. So, um, all right. Hope they got some fight against Michigan state because they better show uh, up. Michigan state will, uh, show up and they do play hard and, uh, they just beat the pants off of Wisconsin. So, and Wisconsin's apparently like the greatest team of all time. Yeah, exactly. They what do you think about the best the, player in college basketball absolutely. in 47 years? So. Greatest player of all time. What do you think about the idea of Bruce Pearl getting paid by Maryland? What? Like, do you think that that would actually happen? Because there's a lot of people saying Maryland should throw as much money as they can at Bruce Pearl. Why would Bruce Pearl leave? I don't know, but I guess money does talk if you look at uh, a certain other college sport. I don't know. I think I maybe I, I, I don't know. I think Bruce Pearl loves what Maryland's got a lot of resources. Yeah. I'm not wrong. Money. Um, my question is, do you think Illinois will, would make the tournament if Kofi wasn't back this year? Yes. Okay. I think they'd sneak in as like a playing team probably. Okay. All right. But I also feel like there's still a lot of Big Ten teams that they can beat without him. Like I Northwestern, agree. Northwestern, they should be able to beat if he's there or not. Tomorrow is one of those games where you need Michigan State to be a little bit off, and I think that they will be a little bit off. That's why I think that Illinois is going to win, and we'll talk about that later. But yeah, um, well, I mean, you just look at Michigan State and and you know what they Wisconsin didn't have a wall, and Michigan State dominated them. So. Yeah. Illinois not having Kofi scares me. 
Yeah, it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. Um, I, but I don't know. I guess uh, he. I guess Kofi went, underwent his medical thing at two thirty today. So um, I'm sure that we won't know until you know an hour before the game or so tomorrow. Do you think he's going to play? I don't know. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Gun to your head. Go. No. All right. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. Um, but this is the, this is a season in college basketball where you don't really need an elite point guard to be great. Like, do you look at very many of the top 25 teams in the country right now and say they have an elite point guard? Because I feel like that's not something that we're seeing. Like Gonzaga, Nimhart is good, but I don't think he's elite. He's good. Yeah. Arizona, I mean, how good do we think uh, Creesa is? I mean, he's all right. He's good, very what good. Do you but consider Matherin a small forward. He's a little bit bigger. I mean, if he more of a shooting guard, small forward hybrid type. Okay. But if he were bringing the ball up the court every time, yeah, he'd be elite. But uh, I just don't think there's that many elite point guards in college basketball this season on the great teams. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Illinois does not have an elite point guard. They have a good point guard. If Frazier is the point guard, they uh-huh. have a. We Who don't knows know what you're gonna get. We don't know. Yeah, <laughs> talented point guard if Corbello's playing. Right. Um. But I mean, it does. A. I mean, point guard is still the most important position in the sport, right? I mean, I think a perfect example of that is what happened to Kentucky against Auburn. Yeah. Because when our boy Ty Ty Washington went down, they fell apart. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is a game for Illinois. If Kofi is not there, they need to show that they can win without him, but they also need to show that against an elite team, though. point guards That's still nice. matter. Yeah. They still matter, but you don't have to have an elite one to win. And who knows if Corbello is going to play a lot of minutes tomorrow. My guess yeah. is it's probably dependent on what you're getting from Frazier and a couple of the other guards. Right. Um, yeah. I, apparently Corbello didn't practice yesterday because of whatever he's got going on. Um, so I I don't know. It, I guess it depends on how he wakes up tomorrow and how he's feeling. So uh, I you know I I just don't know um, what this team does without somebody to penetrate. Like uh, that's what Curbelo can give you. Um, Frazier, I feel like Frazier when he goes off screens, he he backs off. Um, when people hedge on him instead of trying to get through and, and Illinois is not going to be able to be anybody if they don't trust the, the guys taking over for Kofi. Like yep. you have to have some trust. I, I, you know, and I don't care if it's Brandon leave, you have to trust them to do something. You can't rely on just chucking up threes the whole game. You're not going to beat anybody. And so. Like I said, Michigan State has to have an off night of some sort, and they have a lot of length. That's going to be a problem. They have a yeah. very Maryland-like rotation in terms of the size, uh, because after Tyson Walker, who's six foot, six eight, six six, six eight, six nine, seven foot, it's a bit of a problem in that regard. But uh, yeah. I'm banking on some luck here. I think they're going to need it, <laughs> and uh, I'm assuming you're going to see Walker against Frazier. Um. Walker was a very good scorer at Northeastern. I don't know what he is at this point. But then after that, what with how he? big their lineup is, it's a problem. Yeah. It's, you know, that's a, kind of the, the Scott thing, right? Um, once once Illinois gets past, you know, Grandison and whoever their big is, they're, they're not. Do you start BBV? Do you start BBV and Payne and Bench DeMonte? I don't think you can. Then you're going to have DeMonte guarding a 6'8", yeah. Dave Brown or Malik Hall. Yeah, and and as much as DeMonte, you know, I mean, I know that he is the backup point guard right now, um, but I don't think that you can put the ball in Grandison's hand running that weave or whatever they run um, as much as you can probably trust DeMonte. So, I think I think maybe I you go Flummer against Walker and then Frazier against Christie. And after that, you kind of just have to bank on getting kind of lucky. I mean, I don't know. It's going to be problematic defensively. That's why they're going to need some luck, especially if Kofi's out. Yeah. Uh, but is this a must-win game? 
I don't really uh, think it's must win, but I think it if Kobe's not a, playing, it's not must win. Yeah, I don't think it's a must win. Um, but they're gonna have to they're gonna have to figure something out. Like they lose, don't lose by 16 or it's a play 20. well game. You gotta play well. Yes, that's how I feel about it. Um they this is their third time they're gonna be playing a top 10 team um at home. They haven't won either of those. They played Arizona really close. Um, they took Purdue into double overtime, of course. And now Michigan State is number 10. And uh, Illinois has to win one of these games sometime, though, right? I mean, you can't lose three games against top 10 teams at home. you got to win one of those. Yep. And Illinois, I, I feel like Illinois – at when they're at home, they kind of they have a better chance to beat Michigan State. Um, the last few years, they have won probably won games that they shouldn't against Michigan State. Right, um, the one year Io almost died, right with the yeah when he slipped. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I I just think it's going to be really difficult for him. Um, I almost died twice against Michigan State. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the elbow to the head. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh like I said, Curbelo is supposed to be in the lineup. Um, Kofi, they don't know, they don't know. Brad did say today, um, I coach the guys who can show up when they speaking to the medical staff, tell me they can play, they can play. So that's all we got. That's all we know. Not ideal, I wouldn't say. Um, <laughs> but Michigan State did take apart Wisconsin after Wisconsin had a hot start mm -hmm. on Friday night. Their only Big Ten losses uh, really after weird. after Wisconsin was it was eight to nothing and people tweeted out, "Man, Wisconsin's really good." Like, let's calm down, guys. Let's just, let's just calm down. <laughs> uh, the problem with Wisconsin is after Davis and I guess Wall, there's like and Davis, and at some point you don't really trust anybody else. Yeah, I, mean, I guess that's why Johnny Davis is looked at as so good, is because without him, this Wisconsin team's not good, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They have pretty much Grayson Allen 2.0 and <laughs> Tyler Wall, who's solid, is yeah. pretty much their team without him. So yeah. that is why he's viewed that way, and that's why people think he's the greatest of all time. So there <laughs> you go. Uh, they Michigan State did lose to Northwestern by two. Very weird game. The refs tried to give that to Michigan State on many occasions, but yeah. Northwestern held, uh, held strong and won. Yeah. And then uh, Michigan State did – Get beaten up pretty good. The first game of the season, they lost to Kansas by 13. We all know how good Kansas is, and they lost mm -hmm. to Baylor by 17. So they uh, have two good losses and a very weird loss, yeah. a bad loss. I mean, Northwestern's a bad loss, especially <laughs> at home. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those games where I know you hate him, but Coleman Hawkins has to show up and do something with his length. Um, you would think so, but – I Not shoot threes, up. but show up and do something, <laughs> please. Yeah, don't don't get the hopes up. You know, I think Goody, Goody is somebody who could do. Yeah, something this I, yeah, Goody's. I mean, he's energy he's guy, at length and and passion. So he just doesn't he get can more than five make minutes. Shots, he can make shots. Unlike half the guys that play on this team. Yeah, true. Like, is there five guys in this team that you trust to make a three at any at any moment? Uh, no, is there, uh, there's, can't be a lot of teams where you trust five guys to make a three at any moment. Baylor is one <laughs> Arizona, probably Gonzaga. Yeah. So pretty much the good teams, Auburn, <laughs> the elite teams. Yeah. Auburn. Oh, has, are you talking about the top five teams in the nation right now? Yeah. Uh, Illinois is not that right now. <laughs> you know, Auburn does Jabari Smith, Wendell Green, KD yeah, Johnson. That's how Auburn's been built. Though. Alan Flanagan. They can all make Auburn's the jumpers. Like that for a while. I feel like if you have like five or six guys that can shoot the three consistently, that is how you make runs in the tournament. Because Baylor had six guys last year that could shoot threes. It's true. So yeah. Illinois has what? Two? Three? Threes are definitely overtaking the game. Grandison, um, Frazier, Plummer? Probably. Yeah. I mean – you would like to say DeMonte, but I don't know if you can. Um, I'd say Kofi before DeMonte, I think. <laughs> and I, I I don't I don't really know about Goody. He doesn't, he doesn't play enough. Him. Yeah, there's not enough uh numbers to it. So who do you trust more between Hawkins and Curbello? <laughs> uh Curbello. Really? Thousand percent. Really? I feel like yeah. that's 
I don't know. You, that. What do you mean? Dude, Corbello's threes are always so bad. I don't know about that. He thinks he's Steph Curry. He thinks he's Steph Curry. I don't he's know not even about close. that. Uh, just the way he shoots him. Hawkins he has Steph a hard Curry. time getting it above the rim, though. It's hard to make him when he hit the front of the rim. It's a fair point, no doubt. <laughs> um, okay, Ken Palm. Michigan State's 19th overall. Illinois' 15th. Uh, adjusted offensive efficiency. Illinois is 15th. Michigan State 29th. Defensively, Michigan State is 26th, Illinois is 34th, and tempo, don't expect this to be too fast of a game. Michigan State 98th, and Illinois is 181st. So I think Michigan State's going to push the ball. They probably will, yeah. Um, Izzo said that they were going to, that he thinks Kofi's going to play. So at, at least Michigan State coach thinks Kofi's going to play. But. Yeah, that's just all hearsay. And I mean, nonsense. I mean, you have to plan if you're a coach for him to play, right? Yeah, you, you know, do. He's that yeah. big of a factor. So, yeah, they got they got a pretty deep rotation. I mean, I know Malik Hall can shoot the three ball. I watched him play uh, as Atlantis. I don't remember who they were playing. Maybe did they play UConn? Someone like that, UConn or Loyola Chicago? Uh, yeah, they played both of those teams. But he was lighting it up from three in one of those games. So yeah, it looks um, like they go 10 deep. Yeah. I, I, I think that that's fair. I mean, it was a uh, Loyola Chicago Malik Hall when Michigan state beat Loyola Chicago, uh, Malik Hall was nine for nine from the field. So with 24 points. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen yeah, again. He's but, uh, 56% from three. Yeah. He can shoot. Uh, and like I said, Walker played at Northeastern last year. So, a little bit more competition in the Big Ten. I think it's been an adjustment for him, but still a good player. Uh, shoots 16 for 29 from three this season, 55%. Yeah. So Right now, uh, the Big Ten seems like it's Michigan State's to lose. If, I, mean, I don't know. It changes quickly. I feel like if, Michigan State, if Michigan State loses to Wisconsin, it becomes Wisconsin's to lose. and then Right. And then Purdue, but I just feel like I feel like if you know Michigan State beats Illinois, and then of course Illinois and Wisconsin are playing in a week or so. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. All I know is that I thought that the title ran through West Lafayette, and they have three losses in the Big Ten. So <laughs> weird how that works. True. Uh, but this will be a good challenge, a as way. as it usually is in the Big Ten. Uh, what is your prediction? Uh, I made two predictions uh, with or without Kofi. Without Kofi, I think Illinois loses this game, um, 82-73. If Kofi's back, um, they're going to win it, 83-75. So do you think Kofi's worth 17-point swing? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to say Illinois wins 72-64 with or without Kofi. That's right. I have confidence in this team. And uh, it, 64 points means Michigan State's going to have an off night. That's what they need. That's what you're hoping for. Um and Kofi, I think Illinois won by 12 against Maryland. And then when Kofi was out, they lost by 15. So 27 points. Swing. Well, Illinois stopped trying at the end of that Maryland <laughs> game. So that play the factor yeah, true. in that one. I guess so. Uh, around the Big Ten, I mean, I just wanted to highlight some of the games of the week. Not much going on. A lot of mediocre games going on this week in the Big Ten. But uh, you got some – a couple good ones. I think the weekend there'll be a good game. I mean, Purdue Iowa on Thursday is an interesting one because Purdue beat uh, Northwestern was it yesterday, and uh, before that they lost to Indiana. So, a bit of a weird one there for Purdue. But for a team that's supposed to be like the greatest thing ever, five and three in the Big Ten. Now they got to go to Iowa. Now right. after Iowa beat them at on their home court, right? That is the number number one offense versus the number seven offense. Will we see points up in there? Points up in here. Michigan at Michigan State Saturday. Now, the only reason that this game means anything at all because Michigan going into Indiana yesterday and winning, uh, you got to think right. they're going to make a push. Are you, are you officially saying Michigan's back? No. Okay. They win, they win the, if they beat Northwestern. Because you've been on the – you think Michigan's going to turn it around, train? So well, you got to think something's got to give. I mean, they are three and three in the Big Ten, and right. they're starting to make something happen. I mean, they beat Maryland by nineteen. They beat Indiana by eighteen. So their three Big Ten wins have been blowouts. I mean, they beat Nebraska by a billion as well. 
but they got Northwestern, Michigan State, and Nebraska. Next three games for Michigan. I think that if they win all three of those games, then they're back. Yeah, they'll be sitting up up top because, like I said, something's got to something's got to give up top, right? I mean, Illinois got to got to win some games. Purdue still with two losses, or Ohio State still only with two losses. Um, yep, it's a uh, still anybody's ball game. And Michigan now has officially the most efficient offense in Big Ten play in their six games. According to Kim Palm, they passed up Illinois. So, well, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, and Michigan State has the number one most efficient defense in Big Ten play. Ohio State at Purdue on Sunday. So Purdue plays Iowa and Ohio State this week. So you'd think that unless they come out and win both of those games, I mean, that's that's a tough one. Yeah, put them at. Five, six, and four in the Big Ten, or five and five. I mean, I don't think they're going to have any problem with Ohio State. Yeah, I think that that'll be probably one that they win. But Iowa, that could be a game they lose. Yeah, revenge game though. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is the Big Ten's. It's getting weird. It's getting weird. So Illinois needs to win. Um, they they need. I don't know. Over the next five games. Um, they are – so they got Michigan State, of course. They're going to Northwestern, who Northwestern has, you know, done some things. They're not great, but they're not terrible. Um, they play Wisconsin at home on February 2nd. Then they go to Indiana and then to Purdue. So what do you think their record will be once those five games are over? Well, I think that they'll go three and two in that stretch, and uh, that would put them at what nine, nine and nine four. and four. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty much best case at this point. I mean, that's that's kind of what she. I mean, three and two would be great. Um, Ken Palm says four and one. Okay. Only lost to Purdue. Okay. But I'm assuming they're factoring Kofi playing. Right. And another problem could be the fact that Illinois has. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six away games left, and they're all pretty hard away games. Right. Indiana, Purdue, uh, Rutgers, not that great, but still seems like a pretty hard place to play in a place, a place that Illinois has not played well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michigan State, they have them on the road, and Michigan on the road. And then Northwestern, I mean, does that even count? Um, but it should. Yeah. But it shouldn't. It, Northwestern's, I mean, yeah. Given what Illinois did to them last year in Evanston, yeah, outscoring them like seven hundred to three in the second half is pretty much all you need to know about uh, that that matchup. So yeah. uh, let me let me revisit that real quick. That game was totally sweet. <laughs> Find it right here. Okay, that was in J- that was January seventh. Been over a year since that. Yeah, outscored them. Uh, let's do some quick math here, folks. Fifty three to thirteen in the second half. So big game from. Uh, Kofi, 18 points, 12 rebounds. Io, 15 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. Adam Miller had uh, 4 for 11 from 3, so pretty much the plumber special. 14 <laughs> points. Frazier had 14. Everybody did stuff. Uh, Curbelo only turned the ball over 4 times. Pretty good in 19 minutes. So, <laughs> All right. That's going to do it for watch us. Watch party tomorrow. Watch party tomorrow. I, I guess that that's something We're going to watch happening. party? If you want to do it, we'll do it. I thought we announced it the last pod. So I thought we just threw it out there and saw if it well, stuck. Well, Did it stick? It's sticking, so I'm in. All right, last time we did a watch party for Illinois Michigan State, Io pretty much got murdered on the floor. So we'll see what <laughs> happens this time. I'll be live about 545 for that tomorrow, and uh, we'll see if we're episode number 90, damn it, which one is this? 94, 94. is the next one. So goodbye. We'll Get a, get a win, Illinois. Yeah, they better win. Okay, bye.